Hi everyone and welcome back to a brand new quick tick by Trainers Engineering. This time we're gonna take a closer look at one of those new operations that came with the last NX version. Well, let's take a closer look first at the uh, part that I have in mind for us today. As you see it's an extrude uh, geometry in here and my goal now is to have a milling operation that is roughing those uh, geometries within it. So therefore right click on the program, insert operation in the type I'm selecting the mill rotary and in here you will find the brand new operation that's named rotary roughing. I'm selecting the tool that I have in mind and click on the AK icon. Good. So my goal as I said is I want to have a roughing operation for the inner part of its geometry. So therefore I have to define the geometry for that. I'm going to geometry and I want to limit the machining range actually. So therefore, where is the start distance? The start distance shall be this place in here. And the end distance shall be on the other side of the part somewhere in this area. There we go. So one more thing. And that's the part stock and also the feed weights. Let's update those to 120 uh, meters and the feed per tooth of 0.15 millimeters. There we go. Let's generate the operation now. And that's it. As you can see, we have a nice and smooth tool path around our part. And when I click on OK now, I can start the simulation for that. So we begin the simulation with the click on the play icon. The steady rest is getting onto the part. A tool is being changed into the spindle of the machine and now the operations begin. A spot drilling for the life center. There we are. Outside roughing and finishing. And finally, our milling operation for the extrude geometry on it. As you see, we have a smooth path that's going around the part till the end section that I have selected and right back at its beginning. That's it for this part. Let me finish it. There's also another example where this operation is quite helpful. In this case, I have an eccentric geometry right in front of me. So just like before, make a right click, insert geom uh, operation, select the rotary roughing operation and click on the OK icon. And there we go again. This time, I'd like to limit the geometry a little bit more by activating the IPW in this case. So I've selected it. Now I want to limit it actually as well. So the start distance in this case is going to be in here and the end distance is going to be in this face in here. So that's actually also it. But one more thing, as I have an extended geometry in here, I have to take a closer look at the axis of rotation that's set in the main um, group in here. Instead of the ZM axis, I have to specify the axis. And how do I do that? First of all, I'm specifying the point. In this case, it's going to be the middle point of that button in here and also the vector. When I do so, I now have displaced the axis of rotation onto the middle of my extended geometry. So when I generate the operation now, we see a toolpath appearing accordingly to the new axis of the rotation, just like I want to do too. But one more thing, I don't like those toolpaths up here. So therefore I will click on the top of critical depth and regenerate the operation. And that looks even better now. 
So I'll click on the OK icon. OK, one more thing. I have to set my feeds and speeds for that operation. I forgot it so far. So let's go and do it like so. And when I start the operation now, we see just like before that the simulation is beginning to mill the part just as I wish it to. Very good. Last but not least, I do have a final hint for you guys. Who tells that we are limited on using this operation on a turning machine only? Well, no, actually nobody. So therefore, let's use it on a typical milling machine. Just like before, make a right click, insert operation, select the operation. This time we have to pay attention for the axis of rotation as well. Go to specify, the vector is around this here and around that point. I'm going to the geometry, define the machining range actually, the start distance or the start object is supposed to be down here and the end distance is supposed to be up there. That's actually it. Let's generate the operation. Finally, we are good to go. As you see, all of those tool paths got generated. So when I set my feeds and speed, I can start the simulation again. Let's click on play. And there we go nice and smooth toolpath around our part. All right, that's it for today. I hope you find this new operation just as helpful as I do. Thank you for sharing and liking this video. If you have any questions or ideas what we could show you next, please do not hesitate to write them down in the comments below. And if you don't want to miss one of our future videos, consider a subscription. Bye bye.